Hey guys and welcome to a slightly different video. Today I want to talk about how you can make money selling training courses online. Besides all of the free tutorials that I have on my YouTube channel, I actually make and sell training courses for video editing, motion graphics and visual effects mainly using Premiere Pro, After Effects and Blender and I've actually spent the last month putting together a brand new course that you might actually find useful if you want to create training courses online. It's called Learn Video Editing with Premiere Pro in two hours. It's available on my website on Skillshare. I'm going to put it on Udemy, a bunch of other platforms. So you can go and check that out. The links to that are going to be down in the video description. But in this video, I don't actually want to talk about my new course. I actually want to talk about how you can create and sell training courses online. I want to talk about the different options for your courses, whether you want to self-host them, put them on Skillshare, Udemy or some of the other platforms. Then once your course is live, you actually have to promote it. And I want to talk a little bit to that and what's involved in that and how you would go about promoting and actually getting some sales and some revenue from your courses. And finally, I want to give a few recommendations of what I think is the best way to get started. Now, hopefully you will find this video useful. There are going to be timestamps down below, so you can jump to any part that you might find interesting. But now, enough talking, let's jump right into the video. Now, first off, let's talk about some of the basic consideration that you have to put in if you want to put together a training course. Now, there's a decent amount of money to be made. You're actually really good at teaching and training and creating training material. But there's a few things that you should consider first. First off, what do you actually want to teach? Is there something that you know that you think would be useful for others out there in the world? Now, if it's something scammy or, you know, make money quick kind of schemes, many platforms just reject them outright. Love and relationships also is usually not very acceptable on most platforms, unless you sell it on your own website, then quite honestly, anything goes. But if you are considering putting courses on platforms like Skillshare, Udemy, Pluralsight, or some of the other ones, you do need to adhere to a certain standard as well as a certain context. Most of them are either around creative, like drawing, design, video editing, motion graphics, photography. Languages are really big. If you know a language that you want to teach and you think you can teach it. Fitness, although some platforms don't like fitness either, because again, it can be a bit subjective and hard to teach. Software and IT. If you have a technical skill, like you know certain software language, programming language, you know how to build websites or put together computers or use certain software tools, all of that is highly valuable. And you know, if you can teach well and you put it together in a proper structure and upload it as a course, that can actually be very valuable to a lot of people out there. Now, before you put together your training course, before you even think about where you're going to sell it or how you're going to make money off it, you need to put together a structure, a course, a plan, and you can do that on pen and paper. I personally like to use a tool called Miller Note where I put together the structure of my courses. I plan out the lessons, I break out the content, and then I kind of film them all individually and put them together. Now, obviously you will need something to record your videos with that usually requires some screen recording. If you want to show something on your computer screen, there's free tools for that like OBS Studio, which you can just download. Again, links to everything I'm talking about is going to be down in the video description. For the video itself, you can actually just use your phone. A lot of people, the main thing you want to make sure of to have a lot of light. Even your phone will take a video if you're filming in a bright environment. Don't film in your dark, dingy room with just one window somewhere. Either put up some artificial light or film it out on a sunny day. Put your phone on a tripod so it doesn't jiggle. Make sure it's not windy. Or get yourself a lapel microphone like I like to use the Smart Left from Rode, which is actually really cheap. This is the little guy right here. It costs about $60, $70. Plugs right into your phone so you can get some good audio quality. So you don't need production quality camera. You don't need all of that to film a course and sell it online. Just make sure that, again, platforms such as Skillshare and Udemy have certain quality standards for your sound and your video. You do need to make sure that you meet them, otherwise your courses can be rejected. Again, if you're planning to sell on your own website, anything goes really. But again, you really just need a phone and I would recommend a microphone. Next, assuming that you've had a good idea, you planned out your course, you did all of the filming and recording, you edited it all together with you know any of the free tools or using Premiere Pro or whatever you have. So you're ready to publish and sell your course, but now you need to consider where and how you're actually going to make it available online and how you're going to collect revenue from it. And there are a number of different options. I personally sell my courses on my website. I self-host them. I sell them on Skillshare and I sell them on Udemy. There's a few other platforms I've been looking into, but again, it takes some time to upload everything, get it moderated and cleaned up and then, you know, properly published and actually hooked up for the revenue share that comes with it. So let's talk about hosting it yourself as well as the platforms like Skillshare and Udemy and Pluralsight, which are kind of the three biggest player in the market. Now, the first option, and quite honestly, my recommendations for anyone who's just starting to create training courses is put it on a platform that already exists. Put it on 
Skillshare, for example. It's quite easy. You just upload all of your lessons, you give them text and titles, you upload some course materials or files if someone needs to download something. You put together a class project. So every course on Skillshare needs to have a class project, something where the students can follow along and actually apply the knowledge that they've learned. Without a class project as part of your course, you can't put that on Skillshare. Then you publish your course and it will go through a moderation process where people check your audio and video quality as well as the originality of the content, that you're not overly self-promoting yourself. You can get strikes on Skillshare, too many strikes, your channel or your teacher profile will just be closed and you're out of the game. So make something yourself and upload that. Just make sure it meets certain guidelines. There's, again, too much to talk about. There's a huge amount of guidelines for teachers and instructors on all of the platforms where you can share your courses. Make sure you understand them before you upload it. But once it's published, it's live and people can watch it and you can then earn revenue from the course. Now, Skillshare actually has two different revenue share models. There are referrals. So if someone comes to Skillshare through a link that you shared and promoted on any of your other social media platforms or your own website, they come to Skillshare and they sign up for a premium membership, you get a $10 referral fee. Most of the revenue, however, will come from premium minutes watched. Imagine all of the viewers on Skillshare that are signed up to a premium membership have access to premium courses. If you've published your course, you can decide whether it's a free course, which anyone can access, but you won't make any money from it, or a premium course, which only members that are signed up to a premium membership in Skillshare can access. Anytime people watch your course in a premium membership, you will get premium minutes watched accumulated. So the more minutes you accumulate, the more profit share percentage you'll get. At the end of every month, 30% of all of those membership fees are going to get skimmed off. And those 30% are then going to be distributed across all of the courses on the platform according to the amount of premium minutes watched. So the more time students spend watching your premium courses, the more of that share, the more revenue you can get. Now, personally, I found getting my training courses on Skillshare was the easiest. There's the least barriers, the least requirements other than topics and the quality of your videos. In terms of the information you need to do after you've uploaded your videos is quite minimal. Set up a class project, give your lessons a name, add a title to your course and a nice thumbnail, and you're essentially good to go. Now the cons are that the revenue you're getting varies widely based on how much people really watch. You're not as in control of that, but also there's certain topics that you can't really make classes about. Now, not that I'm in the field of giving dating advice or anything like that, but if that's what you're after, you couldn't do that on Skillshare. Next, let's talk about Udemy. Now, Udemy is quite similar to Skillshare in that you can find a very large variety of courses, quite a lot more than you can find on Skillshare. The process with Udemy is quite similar to Skillshare in that you upload all of your videos. Now, there's a bit more structure in terms of setting up lectures and defining different sections of your course and adding additional material, but also then adding metadata around, you know, your, your ideal target student, what they're gonna learn. And there's a lot of other things that you need to provide to put your course together, so I felt that does take a little bit more time. Also, the revenue share model for Udemy as compared to Skillshare is very, very different. On Udemy, you actually sell your courses. You set a price for your course anywhere between 10 to $200 and you sell it through the platform. So people will purchase your course, they will own it for a lifetime and they'll then have access to it. The money you get does not depend on how much time people spend watching your courses, but how many courses they buy and at what price. If the student purchases a course through a referral link that you've doled out on your social media or your website or anywhere, they purchase the course coming through that link onto Udemy, you get 97% of the revenue of that sale. If someone simply searches Udemy and they find your course and they end up purchasing it, you will get 50% of the revenue. If the student come to your course through a promotion that Udemy is running, like they do a discount sale or something and they advertise it on you know different social media platforms or via email marketing, you will get 25% because Udemy did most of the work of advertising your course for you, you will get 25%. But one thing with Udemy is that it constantly seems to be everything on sale. And that's something that caught me out when I first put my courses on Udemy. Now, when you publish a course on Udemy, you can decide whether you want that course to be part of the Udemy marketing and promotional opportunities or not. If you're saying no, means your course will only ever be sold at the price that you select, so you're in full control. However, if you opt out of not being part of Udemy marketing or promotional means that your course will not surface in any sales that Udemy is doing and Udemy is doing sales all the time. So if you're saying, I don't want to be part of that because I don't want Udemy to discount my course price. I want that to be the price that I set. 
means that your course likely is going to surface a whole lot less and your sales are going to be way down. Now, the moment you say, yes, I'm going to opt in for the marketing and promotional support from Udemy, means they're going to promote your course. It's going to service more, it's going to come up in sales, but Udemy tends to discount a huge rate, like 95% of a course. So you may have set your course price as $100, but Udemy is going to sell it through a discount sale at 95% discount for $5. But because it was through a Udemy sale, you're only going to get 25% of those $5 for every sale of your course. So the revenue on Udemy for me ended up a lot lower than I expected, but it's just because I'm part of the sales and I want to be part of the sales because I want people to find my courses, but that then means you get less revenue. So, you know, you, you have to decide what makes the most sense for you. You can just decide flat rate all of your courses, put them on there and then promote them yourself through your own teacher code on your own platforms. And that monetary wise tends to work out best, but it does require a lot more effort. So mine are usually on discount and it is part of the promotional just because I want people to find my courses and kind of discover Surface Studio on my training material through Udemy more than I necessarily want to make the money. Finally, let's talk about option number three and that is hosting and selling the courses yourself on your own website. Now that itself comes with a lot of challenges. First, how do you actually do that? Now there's tons of WordPress templates for learning management systems where you can create and sell your own courses on your own website. So if you have a WordPress website, again, I'm going to link you some plugins and some templates that you can use to essentially set up a course site online yourself. Now, I haven't used any of those WordPress templates myself, but they are highly rated and they actually look pretty good. So that might be an easy way to get started. The big consideration though with your own website is you need traffic, you need visitors. People need to come to your website. You can have the greatest courses on your website for sale. If you get one visitor a month and that visitor doesn't buy anything, you're not selling anything, you're not making any money. And if you have a big following already, that might work great for you. But if you have no one following you yet, Skillshare, Udemy, Pluralsight, some of the other platforms are probably a much better way to get started and actually just get some traction and get a following and get people liking and watching and buying your courses. Other options for hosting courses on your own website, if you don't want to go with a WordPress template or you don't have a WordPress website, you can use teaching platforms such as Teachable. Teachable is a platform, costs $29 a month on a basic plan, $99 a month on a professional plan, and essentially is a platform where you upload and manage your courses, similar to what you do in Skillshare and Udemy, but the courses then plug in your own website. So you then plug in Teachable on your own website and the courses appear on your website. I haven't tried it, I've been eyeing it, but again, $99 a month requires you to sell a fair amount of courses or a few really high value courses to really make that worth it haven't really gone down that route because I work in software development. I build websites for a living. I've actually built my own platform. I'm hosting my courses. They're secured, they're locked down and you can purchase them via Stripe, so all major credit cards or via PayPal. It does require a lot of overhead and because I don't have a humongous amount of traffic through my website, it's been, you know, it's been eh, eh. I've been doing better on Skillshare and Udemy, to be honest. But again, I kind of like having my own space because on my own website, I get to set the price. I get to decide when discounts run. I get to decide which parts is free and what I want to host and how and where and when. So it's full control, but it is a lot more effort. Teachable, again, one step easier within your own website and then WordPress templates or plugins that you can use for spinning up an LMS on your WordPress website. That again, is kind of an easy option. But again, the easiest to get started is use something like Skillshare or Udemy or Pluralsight if you're more into IT, software and tech. It'll just, it's just so much easier to get started. And once you have a following, you can always spin up your own website later on anyway. Now let's assume you've created, recorded and edited your course, you've uploaded it and published it on either one of those platforms or on your own website. And then you just sit back and watch the money roll in. If only it was that easy. Once your course is live, unless you're super, super lucky, like win the lottery lucky, chances are you're going to make very few sales unless you personally help promote your course. That means you need to talk about your course on social media like YouTube, like I've been mentioning my learn video editing with Premiere Pro in two hours course that I've just made. Again, it, it helps create awareness and get people to those courses. Put it on your own website, write blog posts about it, ask other people if they can post about it, paid advertising, especially Facebook. If you can get a nice creative, like an ad, like an image or something that's quite captivating, you get it on Facebook. Facebook has very intricate targeting. And if you're interested in that sort of stuff, leave me comments down below. I can certainly talk to this at a whole lot more depth. But Facebook lets you target very specifically certain age groups, interest groups, countries, but also income brackets. So I can say, hey, I've got a new course on Skillshare or Udemy or my website for learning video editing with Premiere Pro. So I'm going to target people who are interested 
in video editing, in Adobe Premiere Pro, in online learning, maybe between 18 to 50 years old and in the top 50% of income earners because well, if you're selling a course, you need to target people who actually could afford to purchase your course if they manage to find their way to it. Also, if you're releasing a new course, I highly recommend release some free content around it. Give some lessons away for free. People love freebies and if you get people sucked in and you give them something of value, they're much more likely to say, hey, I like what I'm seeing, I want more of this, I'm gonna purchase the course. Word of mouth is also really, really important. If I get someone else to talk about my course and spread it to their followers, they're much more likely going to believe that guy rather than me because I'm the one who stands to earn money by selling my course. So if I get to spread it, word of mouth, I like, like I love helping people. If I have questions on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, on my courses, on any of the platforms, on my website, I try to help people as much as I can because I want them to feel good and be happy about having watched my course and learned something. I want them to be excited and then either come back for more of my training courses if I release another one or tell other people about it. Like that is invaluable. You need to promote your course because again, while Skillshare, Udemy, Pluralsight, they have search engine, people will find your courses eventually and probably purchase them you won't get as much traction as you may think just because there are so many other training courses, there's so many other people teaching the same things. Unless you stand out in some way or you help get your following and get people excited about your specific course, it may not do as well as you think. Finally, if you're just starting out and you're just looking at how and where to create and sell training courses online, my recommendation is go with a platform like Skillshare, Udemy, Pluralsight, something where you can literally just Focus on creating your course, planning it out, filming it, editing it, putting it all together, and then just upload it. Go through that experience at least once. And again, those platforms make it nice and easy for you. They're templated, they're moderated. Just make sure you understand and adhere to the guidelines that you need to follow. Otherwise you can get strikes or your course might just get thrown off the platform again. Think about if you were to look for a training course online, what would you love to see? What do you think other people would enjoy you teaching? How would you teach it? And then focus on the content and make a good training course. Put that online and see how it goes. If it does really well on one platform, you can then also put it up on other platforms. Most platforms, and again, do check the legalities, let you keep the copyright, like you will still own your course. The platform you're uploading to does not usually own your content. But again, I'm not a lawyer and it depends on the platform that you're using. Skillshare does not, Udemy does not. You retain the copyright for that. So that's why I like to use those platforms. And then, yeah, if it does well on one platform, put it on another one. If it does well there, or you're a bit of a control freak like me, you can put it on your own website and sell it there. Then it's kind of all in your control. But again, there's more effort, like Skillshare, Udemy, Pluralsight, any of the learning platforms, low effort, but payback is a little bit lower. Your own website gives you full control and there's potentially more value and more money in it, but it does require a lot more effort. It does require a lot more time, investment, and dedication to it. So. This, just figure out where you fall. If you're just starting out, I recommend just go with a platform. Focus on the course first because then you can put all of the time and the energy and effort into just making a good course and then putting that out to the world. And that's all there is to it. I am really keen to hear whether you actually enjoyed this video because it is a little bit off my usual content, but I love creating courses. I love turning this side hustle of free online tutorials, Surface Studio, video editing, filmmaking into something that's a bit more of a business that brings some money in as well. And again, I want to make more courses. If you're interested in me talking about how to make courses, how to sell things online, how to promote things online, anything like that, leave me those comments down below. I'm certainly keen to make more videos for that. But with that, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me, what I do on this channel, be sure to check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later.